So where's the real estate crash, guys? You're about to find out in three, two, one. What's going on my YouTube friends? This is Jerry Abbott, your favorite Las Vegas realtor. Hey guys, I think you're gonna really like today's video, but before we dive into it, a couple of quick things. For those of you that have subscribed to my channel, I wanna just say thank you. I really appreciate the support. If this is your first time on the channel and you wanna learn everything there is to know about the Las Vegas real estate market, then definitely subscribe down below. Number two, make sure to give me a thumbs up like, guys. That would really help the channel out. And number three, if you guys are thinking about relocating to beautiful Las Vegas, I've got your back. I'm a local realtor here. I've lived here for nearly 20 years. I know every inch of this city. Just call, text, or email me anytime, and I'll help you find that perfect dream home. Let's dive into the video. All right, guys, so it's October 2022. I do a monthly update on the Las Vegas real estate market. I also talk about the national market as well. What I wanna do is I kinda of wanna paint a picture for you guys because I wanna talk about both sides of the equation. One side of the equation is what I did on the intro. Everybody is waiting for this crash to happen. Prices are declining, as you can see here on screen. This is the biggest decline we've had in a long time, and it's due because of the rapid rise of interest rates. So I wanna talk about that side of the equation, and then I also wanna talk about the other side of the equation where I do not see a crash happening. So let's dive into that right now. All right, so let's first take a look at specifically the Las Vegas real estate market. I wanna show you a couple of graphics. Let's take a look at this first one right here. Now, as you can see, this is the chart for the last year in terms of the home prices in Las Vegas. Now, what you can see are these red boxes and some of the arrows that I put here on the graphic on the screen. If you take a look on the far left, you see that a year ago, the average price in Las Vegas for a home was $410,000. Now, if you look at May, we hit the peak. That was $485,000. So we had a very steady increase going all the way up to about May of this year. Now, if you take a look at the last four months, we've been in a slight decline. We went from 485 to 480 to 465 to 449, and now we're at 445. So if you take a look at 445 at that current price, yes, we've gone down a little bit, but we haven't plummeted. If you take a look all the way back to that $410,000 price point, it's still a 10% increase since a year ago. So again, prices are starting to come down, but they're not crashing, they're reducing. Now let's take a look at the next graphic here. I want you guys to take a look at this. Now see this one right here? This is the monthly inventory levels. Now I want you to look at that small red box in the middle. That was back in April. There was about maybe close to 2,000 homes for sale, which was the lowest amount we've had in many, many years. That's when we were right at the peak levels of prices. So obviously when the inventory is that low, the prices are gonna to go to the peak levels like they did back in that April, May time period. But take a look at the upward arrow here. In August, September, and October, around that big red box that I highlighted there, you can see that we had a huge increase in inventory. In August, we had about 7,200 homes for sale. In September, we had about 7,800. And now, right now through October, we're just shy of about 8,000 homes for sale. So obviously, as the inventory has increased, the prices have dropped down. But again, this shows you a reflection of a correction situation going on with the real estate prices, not a crash scenario. All right, so I'm definitely not burying my head in the sand. I know home prices in Las Vegas are declining as well as across the country. And like I had said in the previous segment, it's mostly due to the rapid rise in interest rates. But what I wanna show you guys in the next three on-screen graphics is something the media doesn't talk about. And that's why I think when you take a look at these graphics here, this is going to be a correction in the real estate market, not a crash. So let's take a look at this first on-screen graphic. This first one obviously talks about sellers are not selling as mortgage rates climb. Now let's take a look at the next graphic. There's two comments here that are posted online a few days ago that I really want you to take a look at and read. It basically talks about the first one is saying, hey, if the market is so bad, why aren't sellers significantly lowering prices? And then a person responds below that, basically saying that he's not selling, even though he's planning on retiring and planning to downsize, he's got a current loan at 2.75%. He's not gonna sell until it makes sense. Now, if you take a look at this third graphic here, this is the same kind of response. The person is basically saying he's got a 3% interest rate, it doesn't make sense for him to move, and he's also talking about when he drives around his neighborhood, there's barely any for sale signs in the area. So he drives around all the time, he thinks buyers and sellers are on strike. 
Now coming back to what I was talking about before, when you see this side of the equation and you see that buyers and sellers are both scared, that means that the interest rate, because it being as high as it is, is gonna make people kind of put everything on ice. Sellers are not gonna to wanna to sell, buyers are not gonna to wanna to buy, so it's kind of like a little bit of a tug of war. So prices definitely are coming down, but I think because sellers are scared and interest rates are too difficult for them to sell their home and move into a new home at a higher interest rate, that's what's causing the problem, but a correction problem, not a crash. All right, so I wanna go one step further here and I wanna drill down and show you some specific examples here in Las Vegas on the website Zillow, which most people are familiar with. I want you to take a look at these next couple of segments that I pre-recorded showing you specifically the reductions that are happening in Las Vegas. But again, reductions, a correction, not a crash. Let's go take a look at those right now. All right, guys, I want to show you on Zillow, since everyone's familiar with this website, a real world example as to what's going on in the real estate market here in Las Vegas. Now, I know a lot of people obviously are predicting a big crash, even though I do not think that's going to happen. There's a difference between what I think is happening now, obviously, which is a correction versus a crash. And I want to show you this example right here on screen. Take a look at this house. This is a very nice average size home, average priced home here in Las Vegas. You can see here in the top right, the price point is $469,000. They did a price cut last month of $16,000. So this was originally listed for $485,000. But if we go down here a little bit lower and you see the Zestimate right there, it says $452,000. Now let's go down a little bit lower. See right here where it says $505,000 right there? That was in May of 2022. So a few months ago, that was the peak price point. So if we go back up here and it's listed at 470, but the value is 450, this basically means that we've dropped 10% off the peak number. Now the sellers here are still trying to get a little bit of a higher price point than the value of what they're saying it's worth, which is about $452,000. But what you can see here, that's a 10% reduction. That does not mean it's a 50% reduction. These prices are not plummeting down and chopping 50% off of the price tag. There's a 10% correction going on. There might be another 10%, but that's a typical average correction of 10, 15, 20%, not 50 or 60 or 70% like people think are gonna happen like back in 2008. It's a very different time, and this is a perfect example showing you a correction, not a crash. All right, guys, let's take a look at one more example here on Zillow. I want to show you a little bit of a higher price point here. Now, let's take a look at this home. This is a beautiful house, obviously, listed at $1.375 million that you can see right here on the top right. And then you see the price cut last month of about $24,000. So this home was originally listed at about $1.4 million. Now, let's go down here a little bit lower. The Zestimate currently, right now in October of 2022, is $1.3 million roughly. Now, if we scroll down a little bit more here, you see the price point there of $1.5 million? That was back in May of 2022. So if you take $1.5 million and you subtract about 10% off that, which is $150,000, that takes you down close to the current Zestimate. So again, this is another perfect example of a home that at the peak, obviously, was a little bit of a higher price. Now it's come down, but it's only come down 10%. Even if it comes down another 5 or 10%, that is still in line with a correction, not a crash. All right, so I know what many of you might be thinking. You're probably saying, hey, look, this guy's a realtor. He's trying to create a false narrative. He's trying to tell you that prices are correcting and not crashing. But many of you might be thinking, hey, look, this is just the beginning. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I understand that point of view. I get that you don't think I have an unbiased viewpoint, but I wanna show you this next on-screen graphic here. Even though it's not related to real estate, you guys are gonna understand this pretty quickly. Take a look at these gas prices here in Los Angeles. These are pretty outrageous. I understand it's Los Angeles. The West Coast has the highest prices, but just take a look at those prices, guys. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous, right? Back before the pandemic, Gas prices were like two, two and a half dollars a gallon. Now we're at these crazy levels. And even though we were coming down during the course of the summer, they just cut oil production again, which means gas prices are going up again. Now, if you take a look at the gas market and then you relate it back to the real estate market, the one thing I'm trying to convey to you guys is we have higher highs and higher lows. And what I mean by that is we are gonna be at a new level in terms of gas prices, in terms of real estate prices, food prices, things are not coming back down to that pre-pandemic level. So I kind of want to make you guys realize just by using the gas example, 
that I don't have any horse in this race. I don't care whether or not you wanna buy real estate, whether it's in a different part of the country or in Las Vegas. I'm talking to you guys face to face right here and telling you that I do not see a crash happening with anything. I don't see gas prices going back to $2 a gallon. I don't see pre-pandemic real estate prices coming back to that pre-pandemic level. I just think this is the new normal. And I think you guys down deep believe that at this point because we've been facing this now for a couple of years all of these prices are out of control and it really just is the new normal. All right, so with that said, I wanna talk about the silver lining situation here regarding real estate. Again, going back to the gas analogy, they spiked in the springtime, they started to come back down now through the course of the summer, and now that we're into the fall, they're starting to go back up because they're reducing oil production across the world. Now, relating that back to real estate, we spiked back in the spring, we've now been reducing just like the gas prices through the course of the summer, but now what's gonna happen is, once we hit this certain interest rate level, which I don't think the Fed is gonna raise rates that much more, we're gonna just start to level out. So while the prices are now down maybe 10% across the board, even if they come down another five or 10%, that again, falls in line with a correction. The silver lining to this is, if prices reduce 10% or maybe even 15 or 20%, that is a good time to get into the real estate market because even though the interest rates are probably gonna remain high, this is the secret, this is the silver lining. People make the most money in their lives from an investment standpoint, whether it's a stock market or real estate, when they buy in a down market. Now I understand people don't wanna buy in a down market because they think it's just gonna keep dropping and dropping, but if you take a look at this market, just like the stock market, when there's a recession, when the prices come down like what's been happening in the stock market, just like what's happening now in real estate, you have to pick a point. When you pick that point to buy, that's where you really make your money. You make your money on the buy side in a recession. So even though we're in the recession, you can wait it out a little bit. But I think even if prices come down a little bit more, this is where all the money is made. You buy when we get down to that baseline level in a recession. I think it's gonna take us probably through the rest of the year, but this is where the silver lining lies. You wanna to try to buy at the base level when we get to that recession point where we think we're definitely hitting that bottom. Does anybody know where the bottom is? Of course not. But right now we're down about 10% on real estate prices. I think we got another 10% to come down. That might take the course of the year here, the rest of the year for that to happen. This is the time now to start considering, not doing anything right now, sit on the sidelines a little bit, but this is where all of your money is gonna be made, just like in the stock market. You buy when it's down at the lowest point. All right, guys, I wanna talk about one final thing here, and this is really important. It kind of ties into the last segment. If you don't own a home right now, obviously you're renting. But if you take a look at this on-screen graphic here, rental prices are not coming down anytime soon. And if you take a look at this graphic here specific to Las Vegas, rent prices here have gone absolutely bananas. It's now over $2,000 a month for the median rental price here in Las Vegas. That basically means you're gonna spend about $25,000 a year just to rent something. So with that said, if you have the financial means to buy a home, whether it's now or later and you wanna wait it out and sit on the sidelines, the best place to park your money, historically speaking, is in purchasing a home or a condo or a townhouse. So when that time is right for you, just reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you have. Just call, text, or email me, and I'll help you find that perfect dream home when the time is right. I'll see you guys in the next video.